Hello and welcome to today's Living Word. I'm Dwayne Matz. We're continuing in the book of Isaiah chapter 6, looking at these seraphim that are spoken of in verse 2. This ain't Clarence Oddbody, part 4, okay? Here's the text. Above it, the throne, stood seraphim. Each one had six wings. With two, he covered his face. With two, he covered his feet. And with two, he flew. And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. That's Isaiah 6, 2 and 3. Well, the final pair of wings on the seraphim that we notice here, they're for flight. And God's angels are fully equipped to show up in any part of God's creation at a moment's notice. And they are always on time. Always. Hence, Gabriel, for example, shows up in Babylon with a message for Daniel. And it was Gabriel who, just at the right time, brought the message of the birth of Jesus to Mary. And then there's the unnamed angels who came to Abraham as part of the Sodom judgment team. And by the way, note that these angels with Abraham appeared as mere wingless men, and he immediately exercised his gift of hospitality to them, something we should be aware of as we are reminded in Hebrews 13 too, do not forget to entertain strangers, for by so doing some have unwittingly entertained angels. The angels of God are always on time. Remember that. I mean, remember that time that Peter was arrested and about to join James, the brother of John, as another martyr. But look what happened. We pick it up in Acts chapter 12, verse 6. And when Herod was about to bring him out for execution, that night Peter was sleeping, bound with two chains between two soldiers, and the guards before the door were keeping the prison. Now, behold, an angel of the Lord stood by him, and a light shone in the prison. And he struck Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise quickly and his chains fell off his hands. Then the angel said to him, Gird yourself and tie on your sandals. And so he did. And he said to him, Put on your garment and follow me. So he went out and followed him, and did not know that what was done by the angel was the real deal, but thought he was seeing a vision. So let this rescue just sink in a little bit, okay? God's going to determine the timing of Peter's martyrdom, not Herod. And Peter, well, you know, he rightly thought he was dreaming. I mean, how else can you explain what was actually happening here? Once safely outside the prison, Peter comes to himself and realizes what had just happened. We read about it in Acts 12, 11. And when Peter had come to himself, he said, now I know for certain that the Lord has sent his angel and has delivered me from the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the Jewish people. Oh, angels, God's angels, always on time strangers who provide what is needed for your situation. And you know what? You and I have likely bumped into a lot more of them than we know or than we, than we think. Maybe Clarence Oddbody isn't that far off from the real deal after all. I'm Dwayne Matz, and that's today's Living Word.